Hi, welcome back to my channel, the number one place to be for parents who want a good night's sleep. So in my last episode, I was talking all about settling a baby to sleep. And as part of my little bedtime series, this episode is all about putting a baby down for sleep when you just can't even get them from your arms to down. I know that problem and I've got the solution, so stick around because all will be revealed. Okay, so you're stuck with your baby in your arms or on you and you know they need to lay down. Your arms are aching, you need a bit of free time too. Perhaps you need to express some milk or you've got just a few jobs to do or maybe actually you just deserve to put your feet up and have a rest but you can't relax because baby's asleep again on you. Or perhaps you've even tried the sling, the carrier, and they have to sleep in there, and yep, you get a bit more space with your arms, but let's face it, it's not ideal, and it's not sustainable. It's okay now and again. But what I don't wanna see is you being in this place where you feel like it's the only way. It, it's fine if it's a way, but if it's the only way, and you feel like you actually cannot put your baby down for sleep, that's, that's who this is for. Okay, so, here are my micro steps for getting a baby down to sleep. This is something that I would recommend people do if they have a heavy reliance, so baby's got a heavy reliance on being on you to fall to sleep. And if you do put your baby down, that's it, they're awake, they're crying again, and you're like, it's just not worth it. And this is something that I would also recommend some, for some people prior to starting my fade out approach, because this is like before that. You really do this first. Once we've got to the, we've got through these steps, then we can start step one of the fade out. Okay, so what do we do? First thing you do, change the hold. So if your baby typically falls asleep with you in this position, try the shoulder position. If it's a shoulder position, try a side position. Change the position in some way. We want it to be noticeable. We want baby to be like, hang on, this isn't right. So if they don't really care, try something a little bit different. It's not a big enough stretch of their comfort zone. So try something that's enough for them to be like, hang on a minute, I'm not sure if I like this. We want them to notice it. Why? Because as I say, it's stretching the comfort zone. It's showing them that, hey, look, I've changed something, but you're still okay. I'm still right here. You're still with me. You're still touching me. I'm still here for you. So they're, they're realizing that, oh, there's a small change, but I'm still safe. This is okay. Okay, I've got this. So make it subtle, but significant. Okay, that sounds like a complete contradiction, doesn't it? Subtle, but significant, but there's a reason. Subtle, but significant enough that they are aware of it. Okay, so what's the next thing to do? Think about creating a small amount of distance, small bits of distance each time. So perhaps you've changed the hold. Okay, we've now stretched the comfort zone there. Now can we create a little bit of distance? So can we hold them in a way that's slightly further away? If it's a chest thing, can we get further away from there? Um, sometimes people will do the, the kind of the lap hold. So you're sitting and you're holding baby, cradling them, but in a, a forward, you know, feet to tummy and head in hands kind of way across the lap. So there's a bit more distance there. And they're, I'm going to do this here for you, but you know, they're more out in front of you than side on. Um, can you find a way to hold in a way that creates a bit more distance? Um, you can also, in changing the hold and creating distance, you could also change parents. So if it's always mummy that does it, try daddy. If it's always daddy that does it, try mummy. That, that can also be an option um, to make a small change but while still giving that comfort and reassurance. Whilst you're doing that, whilst you're changing the hold and creating that little bit of extra distance, we want to reinforce other forms of comfort. So a great one is the shush, the shh sound. It's a white noise sound that's reassuring. Um, so reinforcing shushes, even if you don't think your baby needs it, you're gonna use it later. So by reinforcing the, the, the comfort of shh, or whatever sound you want to make, or little whispers, means that as you change things, that thing stays. So they start to go, oh, hold on, that's still there. Oh, that's still going. Okay, that's still there. It's a comfort they can take with them through these steps. Okay, makes sense? Now, the next stage of this is to lay your baby down. So you're going to put them down in their sleep space, and this time with your hand's still there. So whatever your current hold position has been, you're gonna to move to the next step, which is to place them down, but keeping your arms 
on them, round them in some form. For a few minutes, you need to be in a position where you can kind of lean, lean into the crib so that the difference isn't too huge. It's like, okay, hang on, I'm lying down in here. I don't like it, I don't like it. Ah, oh, but you're still there. You're still touching me. You still have your hat, you know? So it's almost like a subtle step. But this is by no means the first step. I would take these steps over a number of bedtimes. I wouldn't do this all in one night. I would take the change of hold for one or two nights. I would create some more distance as I go. Then on maybe night three, four, I might try them putting down. But if it doesn't feel like it's time yet, you can take as many bedtimes as you need to make these differences. Just don't get stuck and plateau in one position or in one hold. Make sure it's, you keep moving it along piece by piece. Once you lay your baby down and you have achieved the goal of putting them in their sleep space and you've got your hands on and hands in there for comfort, but they are falling to sleep there, then you're ready for the fade out approach. And you can start at step one of the fade out, which I have other videos on and it's also in my book and it's explained exactly how to do that. But if you can't yet get baby down, use these micro steps Take your time with it and get to the point that you can place baby down, even if it does involve lots of shushing and hands-on comfort, then you can start step one of the fade out. Okay, I hope this has helped you and you understand the micro steps and I will see you again for another episode very, very soon. Take care. Thanks so much for watching. If you've liked anything about this episode, then please leave a comment below and hit subscribe for more episodes like this. If any of your friends would benefit from seeing this video, then please do share it with them using the hashtag TheSleepNanny. And we look forward to seeing you again real soon.